So Ollie's got a uh, no body dominant training day to day. Uh, his uh, first movement is back squat with the eccentric hooks. Uh, so Ollie's doing accentuated eccentric training. What that means is that everyone will be stronger lowering the weight than they are lifting weight. So this allows him to lower 120% of his max and lift 80% of his max, uh, which uh, has a lot of benefits for injury prevention and, uh, and force production and, and strength. So we're also utilizing something called cluster training, which is where Ollie gets a 10 to 15 second break between reps. Uh, the reason for that is that if you do a normal 5x5 five five training session, you'll do 25 reps in 25 minutes of uh, about 85% of your one rep max. By using this, we're allowed to do the same number of reps, but with 90% of the one rep max, which leads to greater gains in strength over time. So the benefits of back squats for athletes is one of the, one of the most important uh, exercises to improve into your program. Essentially, it allows an athlete to put more force into the ground, which ultimately leads to faster acceleration um, and, and faster skating speeds. So Ollie's second movement today is the push press. Overhead press and strength, massively important for, uh, for, for hockey players in terms of it's the most important upper body exercise that, that we do. Uh, translates very well to how stable they are on the ice and how much force they can produce with their pressing muscles. Ollie's doing a, an explosive concentric, which focuses on his ability to produce more force more quickly. And then a slow eccentric, slow lowering portion. That, uh, it helps to improve the, the condition of the tendons and actually leads to greater strength than if you just drop the weight down uh, without actually fighting against it that Ollie is using is designed to train the abductors, which is muscles on the outside of the hip. Because of the position that hockey players skate in, these muscles are often very, very weak, and weak abductors leads to an increased risk of ACL and MCL tears, which is very common injuries in, in ice hockey. The device that we're using actually has about, I think it's about 170 pounds worth of resistance. It's designed for power lifters, uh, so it's, it's really, really quite challenging. Uh, obviously in hockey, uh, you don't do things bipedally, you don't do things with both feet and straight in the same line. So you have to train unilaterally, you have to train one leg at a time. This will allow us to uh, rebalance the, the, the right and the left leg. And it's also amazing for hip mobility uh, and hip extension, which is critical for speed. So one of Josh's first movements today is uh, pull-up. Um, it's a cornerstone of any upper body program. Uh, I like my athletes to be able to do 50% of their body weight as external weight. Just as you there, because he's a heavy guy, but that is 40 kilos extra, extra weight. Uh, maximum strength phase of training, and for that we're using a program called the Modified Hep Burn Method. It involves doing eight sets of one of two exercises, followed by four sets of five of the same two exercises. So a lot of volume on some big, big bang for your buck exercises. Produces really serious gains in strength in a short period of time. Josh is lifting the weight from um, an inertia of time. The weight's going to rest on the pins instead of him lowering it and, and using the turnaround. The reason being, Josh overly relies on the elastic properties of his muscle, and so we're, we're taking that away from him and forcing him to just use the actual contracting muscle. Upper body strength, super important for, for hockey players, especially for, for defensemen. Um, these two uh, exercises becoming stronger in these is going to really help Josh when he's kind of fighting for position and, and, and trying to smash guys into the <laughs> this is Josh's first training session of the day. He's actually training twice a day at the moment. The type of training that he's on at the minute, the morning session takes so long and it takes so much out of him that we have to do all the assistance exercises and structural balance exercises later on in the day as a second session. Does that make sense? Yeah. So from here, there, yeah, the arms aren't doing much, whereas you're kind of pulling it like that. So Start with it and comes out with the mid time, right there, yeah. and then pull it backwards. Yeah. It's going to nearly hit yourself in the face. It's because you produce so much yeah. more force, yeah? And when, you, when you do that just as for that, when you do that just as well without nearly snapping yourself in the face, is that your elbow is going to be fine. Produce that force, instead of the bar coming here, you've got to go like that. Rip your elbows through to the face. Yeah, good. Panorama is a custom piece of kit that we had uh, built for ourselves. Fantastic for hockey players. Nothing gets a burn on the quads quite like this, other than actually being on the ice and doing a hard skate. So when Dan Spang was here uh, last year, 
Uh, he trains with a guy called Mike Boyle in the summer. He's a very well-known strength coach in America. He used this, said it was the best thing that he's ever used, and immediately sent a video to, to Mr. Boyle. They're saying he needs to get one. So, for arms players, this is a fantastic tool because it works on local muscular endurance. Um, it's not the only tool that we use for conditioning, but it, it really adds something that bikes and hill sprints and things like that can't give you. So with conditioning, you always want to be as close as you possibly can be to the actual event. And if the guys can't get on the ice, this is the closest approximation of the metabolic demands and the muscular um, the, the motor pattern that they actually use on the ice. One is really good um, at replicating a hockey stride. There's nothing really close to getting you back on the season as using this. So especially when I was injured, it was really good to get me back out.